Oh, it's a new opening. Nice. Very sentimental and heartfelt. Look at the whole crew. Damn, that's a lot of people. <laughs> what in the world? Maybe I should not watch this. Yeah, man, this is all gonna get resolved, right? This is all happening. Oh no, sad Winry. Oh no! <laughs> this is literally everyone, which is very fitting. Happy Winry, there we go. Some light in the darkness. Is this the last opening, I wonder? Episode 51, the immortal legion of zombies. Here they come. This guy doesn't know what's, what he has coming. I'd say it's successful. Undying, obedient, invincible soldiers who will fight whoever we order them to. We have our immortal legion at long last. Papa. <laughs> Indeed, yes, I am your father. No, you're not. Son. Not even close. And now, I want you to. You are not the closely. one. There are many <laughs> oh no, it's starting. <laughs> they want to take us over. Papa. You men have a job to do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what were you thinking, dude? Come on, you had that coming. They're like even more zombie-like than I thought. They're just straight up zombies. Headshots, headshots, headshots only. Nice shot. He's fine. You're sure this is it? Yeah, it's exactly like Al told me. No one bothered to clean up and who is the remains of Barry? That's sad. Stand back. Open. Whoops, there they are. <laughs> She's still at it. She's gonna take down the whole thing. She's just gonna take down Central by herself from the inside. What? You're going to shoot? <laughs> Pull your forces back now. My Briggs men will not hesitate to wipe them out. They made that very clear last episode. This is not a bluff. Close all the gates! Seal every entrance to the command center! Understand? Don't let them in! No Briggs soldier or Mustang! Ah, so you do have some metal, twisted though it might be. Oh, you shouldn't get too cocky! We'll kill every last one of you! All you mountain savages! You're about to have much bigger problems. Oh my god! You just got smushed real good. Oh dear. Mess. I made a mess. <laughs> you cannot interfere. See, I was told to kill you. Yeah, this is the one thing I was thinking about that actually could turn the tides. Because all of these central soldiers are such chumps. Although props to that guy for actually standing up against Armstrong, because that is just suicide. So it's pretty clear that Armstrong and Mustang's crew could just come in and like roll everyone over. But there's the homunculi. Well, I guess there aren't that many around. It really is just Sloth, right? But there's also Father, who's got to be a beast, like an absolute beast. It's kind of cool that it's Armstrong who meets Sloth again, because she's already dealt with him once, right? So they have kind of a history. Although I don't think Sloth cares too much about that. It looks like another seat has just opened up. Thanks, <laughs> you have my gratitude. This sword was passed through the Armstrong family for generations. Now I don't have to sully it with his filthy blood! Armstrong versus Sloth, that's awesome. Bastard. I love how they're like getting through the zombie apocalypse through punching. Oh what? You can just destroy their material, no? I mean, Scar just tried that, but... Brother. Brother? There's no way. What? They used human souls to make these things? Looks like something major. Yeah. yeah. Word is, Mustang's leading a coup d'etat. This won't turn out pretty. There, there, now, sweetie, please don't cry. Yeah, so the more I see, the more I think they are focusing on that intentionally. The perspective of Amestrian seems important. Even though, to my memory, we haven't seen that much of that yet, it seems like they're sort of building that up now, where public opinion is going to be important. How could they even think to create these monsters? Well, it looks like we'll just have to plow through them so we can get to that bearded bastard. <laughs> <laughs> But how, though? Mustang is fleeing in an ice cream truck. <laughs> that is that is accurate, actually. Be on the lookout. Uh, 
They cut out. They're dead. They're all dead. This ice cream truck is such a nice touch. Truck, huh? No, don't change it. It's aggravating not being able to fight with them. Who knew that sitting around waiting could be so painful? Yeah, I feel like you're about to get some action though because of this Morse code signal. Salim's been playing with my head. <laughs> yeah, he's not playing. I guess Al doesn't know Morse code. Whatever else he might be, he's still just a little kid. He knows. Yeah, there you go. Drop him, Alphonse! <gasps> Stop him from making that sound! Dot, dot, dash! It's code! He's sending out a signal! <gasps> He's been broadcasting our location! Oh, no! Damn, Kimberly of all people. I forgot about Kimberly. That was stupid. No! Mr. Lion! Damn it, at least let him fight. Hey, thank you for oh, coming no. to get me, Kimberly. Yeah, it was too easy. I appreciate it. Oh my god, Kimberly and Pride together is insane. <laughs> What's going on, Envy? It looks like you tricked me! <laughs> oh yeah, you think? No, I didn't lie to you! Your search for immortality is further inside! Keep going! <laughs> Whoa. Damn, she's good. I like that little bottle catch. Again. You can eat him. It's alright. What do I feel like this is going to give Envy a body? Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that is crazy. Oh no, I thought we were done with Dinosaur Envy. Man, things really shifted this episode. We went from like, winning, being victorious. Mei Chang. To... Having two homunculi come back and pride teaming with Kimberly and the zombies too. We're gonna need a bigger ice cream truck or the help of Madam Christmas, one or the other. But that's actually great, right? That's what you want. I want everyone we know to be here and be involved, including the villains. I mean, the villains in this show are spectacular. And it's weird because on some level, I like them. You know what I mean? I'm glad Envy's back and I'm glad Pride is back. And it's so exciting in like a really dark and terrifying way to think of the pride Kimberly duo. Those are the two characters I feel the most fear about and they're they're paired up now. Though for reasons I can't explain, I feel like Kimberly is in danger there. I could see pride and Kimberly not getting along because of their personalities. I could see pride destroying Kimberly for some reason. We have to tell Al. Wait, please hold on. What happens if somebody discovers that you're Dr. Marco? I don't care. We can't just sit here and do nothing. <laughs> Dr. Marco, the ultimate hero. You ate gluttony? It was crazy. Kind? Yeah. It's not like it's cannibalism. We are a collective. We were both born with the same father. And now we've gone back to being one form. So that's how it works, huh? <gasps> Mr. Heinkel! Okay, still alive. I'm not looking good, though. Oh? Still alive? What a pity. No, no, just move but on. Then you move are on. A chimera. The life force is strong in you. <laughs> Mr. Heigl! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Let me go! This is crazy for Al, too. Not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, why you? <laughs> Al's good. I don't know if he can win this. Why bother fighting? <laughs> ah, the old give him the feet trick. Ed did that against Lon Fawn a long time ago. This is like the hero matchup I'm most confident in. Armstrong's got this. That's not it though. Such a pain. What's that? <laughs> not even a pain. I should have known that wouldn't work. That's far enough, General Armstrong! We have our orders. I just let him fight. To shoot you for the traitor you are. Take aim, man. Fire! You idiot! You 
shouldn't have concentrated your men. <laughs> yeah, he's taking a cannon blast though, so. Please tell me that at least it's something. No. <laughs> Too easy. Hey, look, I caught you, General. Yes! There you go. <laughs> Damn, that was one of the best entrances so far. And the explosion. The homunculus. Bullets don't work on him. Maybe if we had some heavy artillery. Maybe if you two team up. Don't say. Fortunately, dear sister, that is my specialty. Why don't you let your brother have a crack at it? I'll take this atrocity down. Come on, you monster! <laughs> Man, Armstrong versus Sloth? Another Armstrong versus Sloth. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of pain. That feels so good after the building tension between the two Armstrong siblings. That gave Alex such a nice chance for, I don't want to say redemption, but like proving himself. Especially after all the disparaging things that Olivier said. He's been absolutely destroyed by her in so many ways recently. The strong survive and the weak die. He just saved her life, and he's really showing up. But the other thing is, this is something that we really need for his character because of his conflict about not doing what he felt was right, or not being on the right side, or quitting, or whatever, during the Ishvalan War. So he needs that opportunity to come back and actually do some something great. And beating Sloth, or fighting Sloth at least, that would be a lot. That would be a whole lot. And they seem like a really good pairing, too. Just leave me. Get out of here. Listen to me. Go. He has no legs. We're facing Kimberly and Pride both. Yeah, pretty much the <laughs> ultimate team. They really are, but this is such a desperate situation. I promised my brother I wouldn't let anyone else die, no matter what. Wasn't it Kimberly who said that the true test of winning was surviving? <laughs> Which reminds me, I have something that might be useful. <sighs> <gasps> Mr. Heinkel! Oh, right, he picked that up from Kimberly. These are made using human lives, aren't they? Man, this is really tough. Don't use it for yourself. Use it to save the entire world instead. <laughs> you deserve it. Because even though they've been put into that stone, you still recognize them as people. Even though they're trapped in stone, they still want to fight to protect what matters to them. Let them fight. They deserve the chance. <sighs> All right. Now you give them hell for me. Damn, out of the Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> we'll fight together. Wow, it's crazy for Al to have the Philosopher's Stone. I got sort of mixed feelings about it because it feels like using the tools of their enemy. Mr. Lion makes a really good case and it's perfectly reasonable for Alphonse to use the Philosopher's Stone in this scenario up against the two baddest villains ever. But there is something a little bit weird about it. I can't help but wonder if there's like a danger there. It feels sort of like using the dark arts, you know, using the using dark magic against the dark magic users. But Al is definitely the purest of pure hearts. So if anybody can use it well, it'll be him. But those considerations aside, I'm really excited to see Alphonse wielding that kind of power. And without his legs, how can he possibly escape? His hat again. How many hats does this guy have? Good. Of course, Kimberly likes it. Damn. Damn. Upgraded Al. Very well done, Alphonse Elric. He looks awesome. Aw, new end credits. I sure hope there'll be a rainbow. <laughs> at the end of this story, because I can see there being a lot of tragedy. Hopefully no crying Winry. The next time Winry cries will be tears of joy, right? It's such a great idea. Having it be Al, who is one of the biggest points of conflict for Pride, because they're total opposites. Pride is Pride, right? Al is just this humble, pure, beautiful thing. And Al has rarely been the one to step up into confrontation. In a way, he's kind of peaceful. He's sort of anti-confrontational, but he's anything but weak. In fact, I think he's one of the strongest characters in terms of like his spirit. And so I have no doubt that Al being 
pushed to the limit like this or having to make a stand will be glorious. It's this ultimate light versus darkness moment. And I like how even Kimberly took notice of that. Kimberly's like, good Al, you know, like that's great, man. Stand up, do your thing. Cause you cannot say Al is not convicted. You can't say he doesn't have beliefs and you can't say he's not consistent. Like he literally gave his body for Mr. Lion. The other thing I really love about this episode is the Armstrong save. The Alex Armstrong save of Olivier Armstrong. So I want him so badly to have a moment. Because he's such a beautiful character, like I love him so much. But he's kind of gotten a rough deal in the series so far. He's a little bit too sweet for the world, it feels. And so I get similar feelings about him standing up that I do about Al standing up. Not only are they great people and really sweet people, but they can handle themselves and they can show up when the moment's right. And the extra special thing about Alex showing up is that it's in front of Olivier, who has treated him pretty badly, but it almost doesn't matter in light of the situation. So there's so much potential for both of these scenarios. Among all the other scenarios, I mean, that's what's so great about this whole thing is like, there's just so much going on, but I'll have to wait and see how it plays out. So that's the end of episode 51. I'll see you guys next time when we continue the, the epicness, the epicness that is all these crazy situations. <laughs>